Hey guys, so let's draw a swamp scene today. Um, swamps are forests that are partially flooded. Um, there's a lot of them in the southern United States like Louisiana and Florida and Alabama, Mississippi. So um, we're going to make a, a landscape, a scene, which means we're going to have foreground, middle ground, and background as things get further away from us. Um, there are lots of animals and plants that are native to the swamps. And so uh, first, in my foreground, I want to kind of showcase an animal you might find there. And so I'm going to use a bird. I have this book by, of John James Audubon, Birds of America. And he was a naturalist painter. He painted lots and lots of birds and animals. And so I thought a good one would be this egret. So uh, egret is a bird you might see in a swamp. It's a wading bird. Uh, you might see it on fields with cows sometimes. Uh, so I'm not going to try and make it look just like this. Obviously, Audubon worked a long time to make this picture of an egret. I'm going to make a simplified version, and it's just going to be in the corner of my picture because it, this is going to be a whole scene. The bird isn't the main part. Alright, so this egret, he's made kind of fluffy with these longer feathers. Usually when I see egrets, they don't have that, so I'm going to kind of simplify it a little bit and maybe that'll be easier for y'all too. So way down at the bottom of the page, I don't want my egret to be so huge that it takes up the whole thing. And I also want it to be in the foreground so it makes sense that it's bigger in the picture because I'm going to have more stuff in the background. Um, let's look at the shape here. So I've got kind of a oval, maybe teardrop sort of shape for its body, a curved neck, sort of like an S, and its head with a very pointy beak. So first I'm just going to rough in its body. So make a oval shape for me. Alright, so then for its neck we need to come down and curve back up in this sort of S curve. Hard to hold the paper like that. Okay. Need to leave room for its beak. Gotta be careful. Same thing over here. Curve up. All right. So I've made these S's sort of match here. Let's see. Okay. And then I'm gonna make his beak. He could be looking up or down. I'll do kind of an up sort of. Look at the legs. The legs kind of back, and then they have these long toe talons. So let's see. That's, his leg starts way up here on his body, so we'll start up here, go back and forward. Achoo! Bless me. Okay, now. Just line, one line does not make a leg. We need to be thick enough. So we'll go next to that one and make another line. Alright, and his other leg's kind of hidden in his fluffy feathers. So it just has the bottom part. Toes, they're going to be three toes spread out, so we can just do one, two, three. And then one going back to keep his balance. One. Same thing on this foot. One. One 
going back. Okay, I'm gonna finish off his beak here. Add nine. in the corner of my page. Uh, I want to make it a little more detailed so I'm going to add some curved lines to show that it has feathers and a little bump here for the tail. No, come back. <clears throat> Okay, so a fun thing about this is that this is bird's very close to us, and since we're drawing a swampy, watery scene, I'm thinking his feet will need to be in the water. So, imagining a straight line across his legs, I'm going to put little curves right there. And then I'm going to put little ovals, very light. I'm using my pencil lightly. Let's zoom in on that. Get a focus. No, really? Alright, so now you can see the little ovals. until he's in the water. Okay, so moving back in space, I'm going to put some cypress trees, bald cypress trees, uh, because that is a common tree you'll see in the waters of the swamp. To do that, I'm going to make sort of a bumpy line that's almost flat. Now, it's kind of flat and bumpy like this because it is also in water. So I'm going to add a little ripple there. Fun thing about cypress is that they have something called cypress knees. So the roots of a cypress tree will bump up out of the water and make these fun little projections. And so you can add a few little bumps. Stay focused. <laughs> okay, let's do another one that's sort of maybe a little bit behind our egret here. So we got the tree. Okay, and on this one I'm going to put a branch reaching across. side of it. And we can make a branch that kind of matches. They'll have sort of these mirror images sometimes. All right, and then I'm gonna finish that branch. Getting some little <coughs> some little limbs coming off, twigs. Finish this one too, just to show that it's not so thick. Now, the reason I wanted to put a branch here, oh, one, just because it made an interesting composition, kind of framing the picture. Blurg, framing the picture. Uh, and two, because something else you'll see in swamps is moss. Spanish moss specifically grows from trees. So you can make a curly 
mound hanging from your branches to show that there is moss on your tree. So just make some kind of curls that are on the branch and hanging down and just draw a lot of little curly cues, loop de loops. You can color it in if you want. There we've got some moss. Oh, I don't want to forget the knees for this tree. The knee here. And how about one over here? And always looks better with some little ripples to show that it's in the water. Okay, now I'm getting to sort of the middle ground of my picture. These are the things close, I'm getting further away. <clears throat> in the middle ground of this picture, I want to put um, a person in a P-Row. Now I know that sounds complicated, and a P-Row is a very flat boat, um, but it's not, it's not super bad. So what I'm going to do first is make a line horizontal. These would be horizontal, which means flat, because otherwise my boat would sink if it was too tippy. <laughs> so then for a P row, I'm just going to come in a little bit on both sides. Across. And there's my boat. Now, one of the main ways you would get around with a P-Row is having a stick that you would push into the mud to move yourself along. And so I'm going to draw my, my little person here uh, facing the other way. We'll see his back and he's going to have a big, long stick. So first, let's make a semicircle. Then we're going to make a curve down like this. And a curve down like this. <clears throat> right here. L sort of shape. And right here, I'm going to make a curve. Here, I'm going to come in. And then we're going to go out. And then we're going to come down. In between these lines, we're going to make an upside down V. Totally tell we're finishing this leg here. And then this leg over here. Okay, so right here we're going to close this off. This side we're going to bump and in. I 
All right, now all we gotta do is add the stick. So think of the angle that the stick needs to be at. All right, and to make our guy a little more realistic here, we can add some details, like lines to show that he's got hair, a shirt, maybe fingers. ripples that I like to add. I'm putting them on the front of the P-Row here because if something's moving forward in water you'll get ripples in the front pushing the water out of the way. Alright, as we get further back we're going to need more and more trees until the trees are all pretty much blocking our view. So let's make just a whole mess of trees in the water. Now they are further away, so make them skinnier than these trees in front, unless they are just bigger trees. And we'll make quite a few of these trees sitting in the water. Yours don't have to exactly match mine, just make them how you want, as few or as many as you want, as bumpy as you want them to be. And I'm just going back with some little lines, ripples, ripples, ripples. Looks better with some ripples. Ripples, ripples, ripples. Okay, and again, smaller trees further back. I'm going to start seeing branches. Because if I see a tree further away, I'm more likely to see its branches. So I'm going to start adding branches. trees with branches, you can have the Spanish moss hanging off the branches. So I'll add some of that in a second. And more knees!
right, my last thing to make this picture look good is to just add a line in the background to show where the water is stopping. And the sky is starting. Ooh, gotta make sure I almost drew through that tree. Yeah, make sure you're looking at where your trees are when you're drawing this horizon line. And you know what, just for fun, I'm going to put a little alligator peeking. Alright guys, have fun drawing this swamp scene.